Trust in the Lord with all your heart and live not on your own understanding. We are so glad that you are here this night, here to worship, here to hear a word proclaimed. You've come into this place. You've come and, and New Salem Baptist Church praise and worship to you. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. I will enter his courts with praise. And we definitely have come in with that praise this night. So glad for you all to be here for this annual event with the Nelson W. Trout uh, lectures in African. Oh, no, we got rid of the African. It's preaching. It's just good preaching. Uh, yeah, we don't have to be African American or black or whatever. Yeah, preaching. Lectures in preaching. And we're so thankful for you being here with us today. I, I want to uh, give a couple of quick things. Uh, the first thing, uh, this is worship. And not everybody here is Lutheran. Hallelujah. <laughs> and that means that we have different styles and different things that we expect with worship and how we worship. So I, I want to say, if you feel like standing at any point to wave your hands, stomp your feet, dance, what? You go right ahead. If you just want to stay seated, even if, even when we're doing things like the call of worship, you just stay seated. Whatever is most worshipful for you, that's what we want to do. spirits in worship and praise and, and follow through with where the, where the spirit is leading. Amen? Amen. 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 That's the first thing. Second thing, this, this, I mentioned this earlier, this is something that uh, I, I don't know about other folks, but I've been in way to be at Lutheran churches for the first time and the folks don't take one simple thing, and I'm, I'm guilty of it myself. Um, you assume everyone's been in the building before. That's not necessarily true. So, for those of you who may not know, the restrooms are out this door and to your right. Go down the hall, they're across from the elevator. This is important stuff to know. Um, <laughs> yes, it is. You know, and we want folks to feel comfortable. So, if you have to walk up this way, excuse me, where's the restroom? You, know, you can just walk on out, walk down the hall to the restrooms, all right? Um, I think that's all I need to be saying right now. I, I can keep going up. Uh, they got me so pumped up. Uh, I, 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 I can preach, but y'all want to hear me preach. Y'all want to hear him preach. Uh, so I'm going to invite my co leader forward. Praise the Lord, Jesus. Amen. And it is good to be in the house of the Lord. It is good to be here to hear good music good musicians, to meet friends, to, to see old friends, <laughs> and meet new friends. And as we begin, we want to just do an call to worship. So if you feel so moved to stand, you may do so. If you want to sit, you may do so. I will be the leader, and you all will be the seat, the congregation. Amen? Amen. Amen. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and the future. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart.
have a program, you can follow the program as it's printed. Um, so if your name is listed, please come on up. We'll show up. <laughs> Amen. And the next voice you'll hear is that of Bishop Suzanne Delhunt from the Southern Ohio Senate. Amen.
can't speak to God and I have the scripture. Our <laughs> <laughs> scripture is a reading from Nehemiah, the first chapter, verses 5 through 11. I said, O oh Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant that I now pray before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel, confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Both I and my family have sinned. We have offended you deeply, keeping to all failing to keep the commandments, the statutes, and the ordinances that you commanded your servant Moses. We remember the word that you commanded your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though your outcasts are under the furthest skies, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place at which I have chosen to establish my name. They are your servants and your people, whom you redeemed by your great power and your strong hand. O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayers of your servants who delight in reverting your name. Give success to your servant today and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. At this time, I will as a helper to the king. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. And if I were at home, I would say praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I certainly give honor to God who is the head of the church and the Lord of my life. I am grateful and thankful in the words of my sainted grandmother for my space in the building. I'm delighted to be back on the campus of Trinity Seminary and even doubly delighted to be here for these trout lecture series. Uh, to Bishop Dillard, I uh, greet you, my beloved sister, and I will simply say to you, if uh, you ever find yourself in trouble within the ranks of the Lutheran expression, <laughs> this part of our nation, our state. I um, want to acknowledge the administration of this seminary, the faculty, the students, all of them, but I also want to acknowledge two living legends of the Lutheran Church. Um, first, my dear friend and brother, Dr. Jerome Taylor. I am so glad to see him. I'm so glad to see him. So they can see what we're doing. There was a book, I believe it's about Red Gates, once upon a time when we were covered. Yeah. <laughs> once upon a time when we were young, we both had afros. <laughs> I'm so delighted to see him. And then, my dear friend, and mentor and elder in our village, 
Um, would you give God thanks for Dr. Rudy Featherstone? I'm so happy.
and we honor the spirit of the living Christ who chooses to abide with us and worship birds like this. I was sitting over there thinking to myself how blessed I am to have this privilege to be able to stand before you. And so many people that I know and love over these many years, and God continues to smile on me in wonderful, marvelous, marvelous ways. Uh, thank you, praise to you for blessing us and giving us salvation.
And I will cut off your images and your pillars from among you, and you shall bow down no more to the work of your hands. And I will uproot your sacred poles from among you and destroy your towns. And in anger and wrath, I will execute vengeance on the nations that did not obey. Amen. Seems like a hard word, but stay with me. Turn to your neighbor, let your life speak. That's the tag I'm going to put on this sermon tonight. Let your life speak. It is always when I stand, I remember my mentor, my friend, my guide, Dr. Dr. Charles Luke, um, taught me how to preach. And I'm so grateful for that. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for the privilege that is ours to be here together in worship. It's not a small thing that you assemble us, and we dare not take for granted even small moments like this where we can enjoy your presence and the presence of one another. But we understand, God, that as good of a time as we are having, we need a word from you. So as always, when I stand for you, I confess that I belong to you, and because I'm yours, I'm available to you. Lord, in this moment, in spite of all of my weakness, frailty, use me. Speak the word your people need to hear. Oh God, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord. You are our strength. You are our redeemer. And so we pray this now in Jesus' name and for your glory alone. And every heart can stay together. Amen. Amen. Let your light speak. I borrowed the theme of this sermon from an old Quaker saying, but also from a 1999 book by Parker Palmer by the same title. It's a book on vocation. And he's talking about what it means to be able to live fully in who God has created us to be. He says, let your life speak. But he writes these words in the book, before you tell your life what you intend to do with it, listen for what it wants to do with you. Ah, what a word. In case you didn't know, God is up to something with you and me. In case you didn't recognize or realize it, you stepped into these holes. God is trying to do something your life and mine. Redemption and transformation are certainly on God's agenda eternally but also in the time we're living in now. But the fact of the matter is God's very presence is with us for the sake of bringing us into the fullness of everything that God intends for us. And that means that every single one of our lives is an opportunity for the kingdom of God to be realized. You didn't know that about yourself, but every single moment, every single breath, every single move that you make is prime opportunity for God to do something amazing with your life. You are a great kingdom value. In fact, let me put a pin in this right here. You are not an accident. You are not a coincidence. You are not irrelevant, but God has deemed it so, ordained it to be so, that you would be here for such a time as this, rooted and established in all that God has done in Christ. God is trying to do something through you. I don't think y'all are feeling that like I'm trying to see that. Your life has something to say. And too many of us are too silent when God is trying to speak some things that will make a difference in the world that we're living in. On the surface of this
this text is a hard word, but like the others in the prophetic canon, it contains a tense concoction of both hopeful vision, but also harsh admonition. It's a word that's speaking about blessing, but also a warning to all of us who would call ourselves people of God. And I read this text over and over again, and I said, God, I don't want to preach this. Give me something nice. Give me something good. Give me something I can share with people and make them feel good. And God said, no, I want you to read it again. And I read it over and over and over again. And, and I, I went back to my prayer closet, and I said, God, uh, you need to make up your mind what you're going to do with us. Is it blessing? Or is it judgment? Is it favor? Or is it a warning? What do you want to do with us, God? But then I kept on thinking, kept on chewing, kept on praying, and a deeper examination clarifies that we have to accept that there is no dissonance in this text. Let me say it a little differently. Ain't nothing wrong what God is saying to us. Whether or not we want to see it. God wants the best for us and absolutely will not tolerate anything that tries to rob us of the life that God intends. Would y'all hear what I say? God said, I want to be good to you. And I want to be so good to you that I'm not going to let anything deter what I'm doing in your life. Everybody in here is here for a reason. Anything that seeks to undermine our common good as God has ordained it. God said, no, it ain't gonna work. Even if it's in you. Uh -oh. Even if it's with you, I will not tolerate it. The God we trust and upon whom our lives depend is the God who sets things as they should be. This God of love, this God of grace, this God of justice, this God of wholeness, this God of holiness, this God of life, this God of light, this God is not the God of wrath, as some would contend, <laughs> but he's the God of right. God means the best for us by any means necessary. Hallelujah. That's good news, in case you didn't know. That was a shouting moment, in case you didn't recognize it. <laughs> Sin does not have the last word. I thought I'd get three or four amens on that. <laughs> Death cannot stand. Evil will not win. Because God is on our side. And with everything that is swirling all around us, with all that we have to go through, hallelujah. The Kairos moment and the rhema word for right now for everybody sitting in here is that God wants to speak through your life. <sighs> the Lord is calling us. And that's my word for tonight. In fact, I sit out right here. And I think that. <laughs> the Lord is calling us to be who we are. That's my word. Be who you are. Earlier this afternoon, I put an accent on the idea of the remnant, the faithful who remain, those who will not be content with anything less than what God has for them, those who will not settle for anything less than right relationship with God and right relationship with one another, those who will love God with their heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love their neighbors as themselves. This is the remnant. The people who struggle trying to live according to what God says is right. The remnant. As Israel survived, I maintain that also the historic black church has much to offer the world in the how to work through struggle. struggle. Holding fast to God's unchanging hand, to the God who has been known to make a way when there is no way. Black and brown people have navigated their way through the impossible valleys and treacherous waters of Jim Crow and Dred Scott and all of the other things that have stood in our way. Marginalization and oppression and dispossession and somehow, here it is, we have survived. We've got something to say. 
any survivors in the house? Yeah. Maybe you have not had to make it through the worst part of our history, but is there anybody in the house who has made it through crazy? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have say Anybody in here who's made it through the midnight tears? Anybody in here who has made it through multiple closed doors? Anybody in here who has made it through the enemies who were hollering your trail? Anybody in here? Understands what it means to survive because you know the Lord has been with you. Anybody in here understand what it means when your ends don't meet, but somehow you're still here and still kicking? Anybody in here understand what it means to go through those lonely seasons when nobody else is around, but God says, I'm with you no matter what, and you have survived. The remnant survived. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. Here you are in here in worship on a Thursday evening because you have survived. You have made it through whatever the enemy threw at you. You have made it through. And here you are. Yes, God is doing something with you. Let your life speak. Yes. When in the struggle, we will find that God's promise is also a challenge. Anybody besides me know that God is a divine instigator? <laughs> God has been known to trouble the waters, but aren't you glad that it still does not depend on you? Amen. God has done all the heavy lifting, and all we've got to do is keep on trusting God, keep on walking with God. The Lord is kind. The Lord is merciful. The Lord is gracious. The Lord is caring, but he has been known to stir up some things and not let us get comfortable with where we are. I'm glad that the Lord of life is with us. Not your neighbor. Tell him you didn't make you. God did. <laughs> But God does. But this is what God says you do have. You have been given the power to be you. So let your life speak. Be you. And parenthetically, I'm talking about the real you. Not the nasty you. The real you. Not the faithless you, the real you. Not the hopeless you, the real you. Not the self serving you, but the real you. Not the complacent you, but the real you. Not the cowardly you, but the real you. Not the idolatrous you, but the real you. The you who is worth enough that God would send God's only begotten Son. And you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. That's how valuable you are. Now let your life speak. Thank you. What should be our faith response? For this gracious God who has been so abundantly good to us, what should be our response? For those of you who represent the remnant, here's the first thing that you can be about. If we are going to respond to the grace of God, we have to live lives of integrity. Stay with me, I won't lose you today. <laughs> Don't know that there ought to be some consistency between who you say you are and the difference your presence makes in the world. There ought to be something about your life that matches the God you say you serve. Y'all won't be mad at me. But I'll just go ahead and say it out loud. All of us are flawed. All of us are fallible. I know that was a shock to some of y'all because you <laughs> right you think you are, no matter how justified your cause may be, all of us can be selfish, all of us can be biased, all of us can be defensive, all of us are broken, and on any given 
day we can claim to be living for God when in reality we are living according to some worthless idol that we have dreamed of. God said, I need integrity. We must become peacemakers who are willing to stand in the liberal gaps in the margins and however we choose to divide ourselves, we've always got to come back to who God says we are, individually and collectively. And if our living does not speak to the relational fractures that are ever before us, I don't know what we're doing. If our living does not change some things, what is the point? If our living does not measure some fraction of the grace that God has bestowed yes, upon us. Yes. Why do we even bother? When we read this text, Micah is envisioning, of course, the future coming of the Messiah. And he's talking to the remnant, trying to get them back on board and trying to get them to have a prophetic perspective of how they should live their lives then. But He's also trying to say that this ought to make a difference for us right now. Michael recounts how survivors of the struggle will be like do. They'll be like showers. They'll be like a lion. They'll be like a young lion. Metaphoric language calling us to ourselves. Maybe not what you see when you look in the mirror today. Yeah. Yeah. But calling us to ourselves as God has said we will be. That's good news. And we need to bring the best of what we have to God today. That's good news because integrity involves us bringing all of ourselves to God so that we can be molded and shaped and so that we can become more and more like the God we serve. That's good news. That God would take your joys and your pains and have the nerve to do something with it. That God would take your successes and your failures and do something with it. That God would take all of you, your shaky past. All right. I don't know who I'm talking to. <laughs> and your questionable present. <laughs> and yet do something with your life so that you can speak. The Lord declares that we are whole. Now we've got to be the best of who God says we are. We've got to follow the direction and guidance of everything that God has set up for us. All right, let me see if I can get you here. I, I, I need to confess my sin before you. Don't get worried. Yeah. <laughs> I have an addiction to warm chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> and I will not. <laughs> and if you have to put walnuts in, <laughs> I, I, it's so bad, I'm tempted to go hang out down at the Double Tree Hotel <laughs> and pretend that I'm a guest with an empty suitcase. That's not my codependent daughter said, Daddy, I'm going to send you the double tree cookie recipe. I said, No, you're not. And I couldn't wait to try it without having to go book a room. I mixed up everything, put it on the cookie sheet. I'm not much of a baker, but I tried. Put it in the oven, pulled them out. It was smelling all good. Went to bite into one of those cookies that you cooked. Almost broke my teeth. <laughs> because I thought I knew what I was doing. And I did not follow the guidance that was before me. I thought I understood what everything was about, but I, I just didn't follow the simple directions of how to make things right. Y'all ain't praying with me. Integrity says you gotta follow where God is leading you. And come to the place where you start to measure up to how God is guiding you. 
We have to be there. Integrity is when you, you go to God with your heart, but you come away with His. Integrity is being shaped by your future self as God works out the kinks along the way. And if we do that, we won't miss out on that good thing that God has already intended for us. We have to live lives of integrity. Here's something else we have to do. Our response to God's plan has also got to be a life of resistance. In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., we have to be transformed, not conformists. We don't fit. We never were supposed to. And if the future is to be right according to God, we've got to live now in ways that resist all that may be wrong. The remnant does not adapt to the status quo. Yeah, right. And so Micah is prophesying during Hezekiah's reign, but also as we get some of Manasseh's reign. And he's trying to get the community of faith to understand what God is after. Now, we're not too far removed Same. from who they were. Yeah. I'm not going to get in trouble tonight. Political evil, social evil. Economic evil, religious ungodliness were the name of the game in that day. But not so much today. Huh? Yeah. There is injustice right now at the hands of the powerful and the privileged. Healthcare and big pharmaceutical lobbies running the show. Titans of tech and corporate monopolies leaving out the little people. Ethics being disregarded in the name of more profit and more power. False prophets all puffed up. Talking heads on the TV that y'all pay attention to night after night. Have nothing of God in them and yet they're just talking away. But if we look around, there's hopelessness, there's desperation, there's apathy, there's resignation. Signs that somebody needs to stand for something to make a difference. So Michael reads this oracle of judgment. You know, the one I read that we really didn't want to hear. <laughs> he says, y'all are seeking things to take the place of Yahweh. It's easy for y'all in Israel to rely on your horses and chariots, your military, your fortresses. But guess what? The chariots, horses, and fortresses of that day are the guns, the economies, and the technologies of our day. The pagan symbols of Micah's day are the political parties, the social agendas, and the TikTok memes that seduce us today. Where is the bride of Christ? who will not cave, who will not cater to many special interests. Did you know that since 2020, for every dollar gained by one of the billions of people at the bottom, 90%, one of the world's 2,600 billionaires actually made 1.7 million. Did y'all catch that? I get a dollar, they get 1.7 million. Something's wrong. We've got to resist. We've got to stand up and say, uh uh, not having it. Y'all remember back in the 80s, some of y'all, Nancy Reagan with her so called war on drugs. No one just say no. No Holy Spirit, no power, just say no. Didn't work. She had missed the power of God's presence that makes change possible. We got to have the Holy Ghost so we understand what we're working with. We need to claim our gift. And you know what the gift she needs to be praying for right now? The spiritual gift of no. The spiritual gift of I'm not having it. The spiritual of the things that are not like God. We have to be willing to say no. Sometimes indignantly refuse to follow suit with the rest of the world. We've got to make sure 
that we live lives of resistance. And it's our collective no against all the craziness and foolishness that's happening all around us. Yeah. We have to step up, church, and be the people that God has called us to be. Let me remind you that we all wrestle against flesh and blood, yeah. but against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. But I've got an answer for that. Anybody in here know how to put on the full armor yes, of God? So that when that evil day comes, and I believe it has, we can resist. We can stand, and having done everything, stand. Put on that truth. Put on the righteousness. Put on the gospel of peace. Put on faith. Put on salvation. And resist. Because that's what we've been called to do. One more thing, and I'm going to go eat some chicken. We have to live lives of integrity. We have to live lives of resistance. But finally, we live lives of surrender. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, God's indictment is that this world is all about themselves. So for all of us, the most gracious thing that God can do is to cut off our idols, to cut off our reasons for arrogance, to cut off our excuses, to cut off, watch this, our foolish dependence on whatever is not God. Yeah. You know, that's grace at work. I wish I had time to talk about our nation of power hungry, fragile, consumeristic, independent humans who didn't read the memo that God alone is our source. We depend on nobody but God. And surrender, mind you, is not cold obedience, but genuine love received graciously from the God who loves us. So dear. Most of y'all don't know this, but back before I started preaching, I was a police officer. And I used to cringe every time I watched a TV show or heard somebody say to a criminal, come out with your hands up. It doesn't work like that on the street. <laughs> but I pray it does work like that in the church. Come out with your hands up. Let that sink in. Come out with your hands up. We read this text and sandwiched between Micah 5 4 and Micah 6 8 is this text. Micah 5 4 says he will be his father. Micah 6 8 articulates the requirement of those who are follow after God to do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with God. And right here in the middle, God says, I got to deal with you. But the way I deal with you best is when you come to me. Cracks and blemishes and all come to me. Because when I start pouring out my anointing on your life, I want it to not just run over because it's so much of it, but I want it to run through all the imperfections that have been a part of your life. But I want you to come to me so that we can work this thing out. I wonder, is there anybody in the room who understands what God is calling you? Yes, God wants integrity. Yes, God wants resistance. Yes, God wants surrender. But in the midst of all that, God wants you. Yes, sir. Let your life speak in ways that don't just generate a bunch of commotion. Yeah, yeah. 
but in ways that have genuine impact in the places where we live, the places where we work, the places where we worship, the places of our lives. Let your light speak. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed in the room. Hearts are praying. We've been given life. Spirit of God is asking, so what will you do with it? Tonight, I'm praying. That the God who has chosen us and cleaned us will allow such fulfillment to occur in our lives that everybody around us has got to take notice. Lives of the remnant that have been redeemed to now allow that same life to touch God, I'm praying in the name of Jesus that the idols that we have been worshiping can no longer stand. I'm praying that you would so convict our hearts that the many ways we have been turning inward allowing this to be all about us, not just individually, but in the collective ones. Check that for us, God, and bring us to a place of transformation. God, I'm praying that you would unleash the kind of abundance that truly does refresh this earth that you've made us upon. Each one of us, every single one of us in this room, will lose us as only we can. And the starting place tonight is that God, we give ourselves to you completely withholding nothing. Here we are, God. However you choose to work with us, do it for your glory. And so we pray this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Every heart will say together.
Southeast Michigan City, for those of you who don't know, that includes the Detroit area. And, uh, and you know, my first call was in Detroit, uh, and, and I love the Detroit area. And there is no doubt, Detroit has gone through hell. Kid yeah. said it earlier, I can say it now. Uh, it's gone through hell over the years in terms of uh, finances, uh, money, and all the way leaving, all kinds of different things that have happened that have put it in a major financial bind. And that includes the Lutheran churches there. And yet, and yet, acts in common. I'll let you talk. <laughs> Detroit has been going through it. We say if, if the nation's got a cold, Detroit has a flu. <laughs> and back in the day, my, my very first crop left was my pastor. I, I was not a city staff person. I didn't work for the church. I went to church on Sundays, and then I did my thing the rest of the week. My pastor dragged a bunch of us to uh, second Baptist Church in Detroit, which is part of the Underground Railroad. And my first trial lectures, I witnessed Jeremiah Wright. Like, oh my God, <laughs> who is this man? <laughs> and the trial lectures has, has continued to introduce me to these fabulous men and women from across the country. We used to host the trial lectures every other year in Detroit. And then we stopped. We wanted it to have a home and get good footing. So here it's now back at the seminary. And it's, it's so, this is what introduced me to Trinity Lutheran Seminary, the trial lectures. Back then, there was always, you know, we raised money and the seminary raised money. We took an offering, they took an offering. There was a time I remember cutting a $5,000 check for the trial lectures for those days are long <laughs> But since I have been with Acts and Common, Acts and Common is a ministry of the South East Michigan Senate, and it's it's a resource for the Detroit congregations. There used to be 15, now they're about six. And who knows what the future will bring. But I tell you, over the past 10 years, eight years or so, we've made it our point to make a significant contribution to the endowment fund. So at least the past five years or so, there's been a thousand dollar contribution to the endowment fund. Sometimes that's matched by members of the congregation, sometimes not. It's a line item for our ministry of Acts and Common because if it weren't for the trial lectures, a lot of us would not know what some fantastically gifted, black preachers, men and women, who they are, and how they can impact our lives. Yes. So my challenge then is to challenge you, to put something in the offering that can support the endowment fund, so that we can continue to meet and hear and, and receive the blessings of Kevin Dudley's and Dr. Featherstone's and we may have a, a, a another preacher coming in the near future. <laughs> so it's, this is my gift to, to the endowment fund and I hope you will consider this a gift to you as well. Amen. We have the first offering of a thousand dollars. I had planned on saying the Holy Spirit says let's double this tonight. But the Holy Spirit actually said, no, 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 no. Can we triple this? Can we triple this tonight? Can we get an offering of $2,000 here tonight? Now you have the 
said, I, I, I don't have the money on me right now. <laughs> oh, welcome to the 21st century. <laughs> there is, on the back of your program, a QR code so that you can give electronically. All right? We're, we, we, we are going to be passing the offering plate. And I understand not everyone carries cash these days. Uh, so you do have the QR code that you can scan and give. If you do it that way, or if you're planning on doing it that way, I want you to tear off a piece of paper, whether it's this, whether it's the, the other insert, whatever you have there, and just write how much you will be giving. I'm not saying put your name on it. Just write how much so that we can get an idea of how much is coming just from tonight. And, you know, we, we, we have, we have the, the uh, the acts in common who started with a thousand. I, I can't do a thousand, my wife would kill me. Um, <laughs> but I <laughs> we probably should have talked to her about this beforehand. So, uh, uh, but, but I'm going to commit of this, of this hopeful 2,000 that we're going to get tonight. I'm going to, I'm going to commit the first 100. Dollars of that, good. She nodded her head. So, <laughs> We're in agreement. I, 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 I can go home tomorrow, so uh, that's great. Uh, I got so, seven hundred dollars. Oh, amen. 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 Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Right, come on up, sir. I'm going to uh, give my hundred. Amen. And then first church will give a thousand. Oh. 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 Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. See, that's why you, that's why you listen to the Spirit. That's why you listen to the Spirit here. Amen. So let us pray, let us pass the offering plate. Uh, and, and, and thank you, thank you, thank you, First Church. Thank you, thank you, Bishop Clark, for your commitment as well to this. All right? So let us pray before. I'd like to pray before we take the offering. Let us pray. Good and loving God. Oh, we are so thankful. Thankful for those who are open and willing to give abundantly. Give abundantly to the ministry that you have called in this place called the Nelson W. Trout Lectures and Preaching. And we ask, Lord, that you would continue to touch hearts this night. That you would touch the hearts of people and let them let us let, let them know that you are calling them to give, to contribute, to, 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 to move forward in such a way that uh, we can get closer and closer to making this a self-sustaining fund and endowment so that these lectures can continue. You've blessed us tonight, Lord, with so many different things from music to scriptures to, to the preached word. Now, Lord, we are just trying to say thank you and bless you and this ministry. So please, Lord, touch our hearts, open our minds, open our wallets even then, and let us give and give of a living. Let's receive our offering.
we'll give that number to you before you leave. But uh, we want to go ahead and continue moving forward uh, with this and with the prayers of the people. All right, friends, we're going to take a moment and pray. As Dr. Dunn said, we will let our life speak. So as we are praying, we will let our lives speak. And following prayers, we'll be finding it. My hands up to offer a reflection. Lord, Heavenly One, we pause now just to honor you, to praise you for all that you have blessed us with on this day. To acknowledge you not only for what you have done, but for what you are doing, and most importantly, for what you have yet to do with us. Thank you for your presence in this place and for all that you have provided for us as we work in your kingdom. What a blessed opportunity this is for us. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. And Lord, we are in some difficult times. We know the isms are per per perpetuated by dominant cultures. The privileges that leave the least of these suffering, domestic and international terrorism, war and hate, the list goes on. But we are reminded today of the one whose life is centered on pathways to justice that reminds us to proclaim the promise. We also claim courage, intention, love, honor, mercy, and also peace. What a blessing we have in these gifts that you have given us. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for all people we pray that all people may know peace and security, that they are free to live and to love, to raise their families and provide for them. We pray for our children, those who may grow up too fast because of the adult situations thrust upon them, and also for the children that grow up with blinders, unaware of world circumstances, issues, challenges, and dangers. What a blessed opportunity we have to teach what is right. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the environment, for the gift of land, water, and air, and all of creation that we are a part of. We pray that we can build our capacity to be good stewards of what you have loaned to us, Lord, for our use that we may pay attention to the cost of the environment to live in the way that we've come, become accustomed to. What an impact we can have with others as we practice being better stewards of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for our seminarians and seminarians and universities and especially this one, Trinity Lutheran Seminary and Capital University. We pray for our bishops and pastors and ministers and church workers, preachers and teachers and ministers of music that are inspired by the Holy Spirit and continue to bring word to life. We remember our camp and campus ministries and our international partners and all who are connected by the love of God. What a blessing it is to be a disciple of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for one another and for all that you, God of love, see that we need, that you will grant us. We pray for those in need or who are suffering and those who have no one to pray for them. We ask, loving God, that you give your compassion and grace on those who have no one and that they witness faith in Christian love. Those considered to be at risk or unable to be in the company of loved ones, those in isolation, in prison, those who are homeless and discarded. May our pains be healed. May our shortcomings be fulfilled. May we be comforted when we need to be comforted and receive a smile or a word of support when we need that as well. What a blessing it is to be a blessing to someone who we know are Christians, who will know we are Christians by our love for all of God's children. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And now for the sake of the one who died and rose again, who lives and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Siblings in Christ. Thank you. Not including the thousand dollars from uh, Axon Common and uh, the, the thousand that Bishop uh, Clark committed as well. Just in the what was in the offering plate tonight. Two thousand six hundred and sixty. Thank you. 